Looking for a fun way to win up to 25 times your money this basketball season? Test your skills on Prize Picks, the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projection for a wide variety of stats, and place your entry. It's as easy as that. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. Easy gameplay, quick withdrawals, and injury insurance on your picks are what make Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Ready to test your skills? Join the Prize Picks community of more than 7 million players who have already signed up. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit up to $100. Just visit prizepicks.com slash get100 and use code get100. That's code get100 at prizepicks.com slash get100. For a first deposit matchup to $100. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. You are listening to the Hiking Radio Network, where we talk the walk with shows by hikers about hikers for everybody. I'm wondering if you'd go wandering with me through the wilderness and woods to where the winds are blowing free. Through the darkness of the night. To Welcome to the Jester Section Hiker Podcast, where we talk about the continual pursuit of the section hiker. And I'll spread the word, and you beat the drum. We'll round up the troops, and get the gang to come. And we'll leave the streets, and these neighborhoods, head over the river. Welcome back to the podcast, everybody, and our second January Jester mini episode. I'm your host, Julie Jester Gayhart, and you are listening to the podcast about the continual pursuit of the section hiker and completing a trail section by section. On our second Jester mini episode about entrepreneurs inspired by the trail, we are talking to the Blue Blaze Brewing Company right here in my neck of the woods, Charlotte, North Carolina. I am excited for all of you to hear about Blue Blaze because their entire business of craft beer is based around the Appalachian Trail, including their beer names, their company culture, and the trail programs they offer here in Charlotte. Today, we are talking with Heidi Nisbet, a.k.a. Picasso, from the brewery. Heidi threw hike the Appalachian Trail in 2018 and decided she would pursue her career with the brewery. Welcome to the podcast, Heidi. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Really excited to have you on and uh, get the word out there about the relationship that the brewery has with the Appalachian Trail. So I want to go ahead and get started, but I want to talk about you for a little bit. So tell us a little bit about who you are and how you got started at the brewery. Yeah, sure. Totally. Um, so I am 26 years old and I was raised in South Carolina. I've been in the Carolinas since I was eight, kind of caught, caught wind of the Appalachian Trail and the culture that surrounds it after I graduated from college and that just became one of my bucket list items and I called it uh, my quarter life crisis where I found myself in the position where I was um, able to go out and do that <laughs> and, and do a through hike. Um, so I uh, kind of in between jobs and stuff like that. And so uh, I did that in 2018. It took me about six months and I had an absolute blast and enjoyed it. My trail name comes from, I went to college for art and I've been drawing and painting for my whole life. Um, so I kept a sketchbook on the trail and paints and watercolor paints, which I didn't really think twice of because I've always had paints with me. But uh, other people realized that that was a little bit different. So I got my trail name from that. So I, I kept a sketchbook the whole time and finished Summited Katahdin on September 5th, 2018. And then I uh, came back to Charlotte and was looking into different different things to to do and I have a background kind of in event coordinating um, and service industry and stuff like that and found myself at Blue Blaze and was incredibly excited because I walked into their tap room and they we have a big AT sign outside and a trail of the the map of the Appalachian Trail hanging on the wall and uh, and it is so in, cool it like, is so I, cool I found my people I found my people right here in Charlotte <laughs> um, so that was kind of how I came into it my interview was you know, like, well, well, what do you know about craft beer? And I'm like, oh, like a little bit. And they're like, well, what do you know about hiking? And I'm like, well, let me tell you. Um, and so my interview was pretty <laughs> much just a whole conversation about hiking and, and the trail and, and my experience out there. Um, that is cool. That was in October. So that was when I finished the trail in 2018. And I've been there ever since. Nice. So you did talk about your Instagram account slight. Well, not your Instagram account, but your sketching. And I want the listeners to know not only 
Are you working at a brewery where, you know, basically we're going to get into your job there, but you also have those sketches, which are totally awesome, by the way. Awesome. Thank um, you. So not only is the uh, brewery inspired by the trail, you are also have a side business where basically you're an entrepreneur inspired by the trail as well. So we're getting a two for one package here <laughs> uh, with Heidi. So let's kind of get more into your role at the brewery. Um, I know originally... When you and I talked, you said you wore many hats, and I didn't really want to describe all those. I was going to let you do that. So explain to the listeners your role there at the brewery. Uh, sure, yeah. Um, I'm sure that anyone who works for a small business can kind of relate. But yes, I, I do wear quite a few different hats and kind of take over a, a number of different responsibilities, mainly just kind of as the main contact person in the tap room. So I, I do not brew. I do not touch making the beer. But for taproom business and stuff like that. So I, I bartend. Um, that's what I started doing. And I really enjoy that because I get to just talk with my customers all of the time. And, and a lot of times the conversation revolves around the trail, which is really fun. But I do also coordinate a lot of our internal events. So anything just from like just having food trucks there over to larger events like our we had our three year anniversary this summer that I was over. And then kind of my, my favorite role, uh, if we had to give it a title, is a, as a brand ambassador. Very nice. Very nice. That that is that is me keeping the keeping the company engaged with the outdoor community and and helping unify and engage with the outdoor community here in Charlotte. So hosting hike hiking clubs, backpacking workshops, and guest speakers. Basically anything that we can do that gets like minded people in the room talking about trail, talking about trail life, and um, enjoying beer while you're at it. Nice, very nice. So. You were able to combine your love for the Appalachian Trail. You were able to combine, you know, what you wanted to do for your career. And I mean, there you are. I mean, you're literally living the dream. So let's talk about uh, the actual owner of the brewery. His name is um, Craig Nunn. And his vision for the brewery, uh, when the three of us were talking, he kind of explained it that basically he has a love for beer. He has a love for backpacking and he lives in Charlotte, North Carolina, and I added this in that he obviously loves the Appalachian Trail because when you walk in this place, it is all about the trail, um, even, you know, how the beers are named. And we're going to get into that shortly. But give us a little history on Craig and how the brewery got started. Um, sure. Yeah. So so he grew up in Virginia um, with the trail pretty close to his backyard and, and you know, kind of grew up in rural Virginia where, you know, his his playground was the woods and the trail. And so so he got, he got into the culture pretty early on. Um, and then he, uh, after college, he actually went out and lived in, um, Glacier in Montana in Glacier National Park. So he got to, um, really okay. immerse himself in, um, in the outdoors and the, in backcountry and have that whole experience out there, but has been to my knowledge, just for, you know, a few decades at this point, section hiking the trail. Nice. I think he has about 700 miles or so under his belt. I know he hasn't hiked Pennsylvania. I told him, that's fine. <laughs> don't, don't hurt yourself. Yeah, don't worry about it, Craig. You'll be don't just Don't worry fine. about that one. Um, but uh, but yeah, so so he has um, in, in his, you know, he's got a family. His kids are in Boy Scouts and he, he takes them out hiking and his whole family is very outdoorsy. And so I think he just he understands and he appreciates the culture that revolves around it. He's been exposed to it since he was really young, since he grew up so close to the trail. And he was kind of uh, in, involved in the craft beer scene as it was coming to fruition in, in the 90s. And okay. back then, uh, so so there was a law from, uh, I don't know how many people know this, but there was a law from prohibition that, that basically prevented people from home brewing and making alcohol in their, um, in their homes for right. you know, several decades. And then in the 80s, that law was uplifted. And that's kind of the birth of the craft beer industry in the, in the United States is when that, that law was uplifted, people started getting into home brewing. And from there, people started getting into craft beer. And I, I think before then, a lot of people didn't realize how many different styles of beer are available to you. You know, you have your American Pilsner, but what if you don't like that? Well, here's right. stouts and, and IPAs and all of these other, other options to drink. And, um, Back then, when it was sort of just becoming a thing, craft beer has a lot of calories, and a lot of people are looking for that 100-calorie beer, that, that really light beer, um, so they don't have to worry about that. Hikers don't worry about that. Hikers no, want they the don't. calories. Uh, <laughs> and so, so um, the, the, craft, the craft beer world and the outdoor world were pretty hand-in-hand hand for, for a long time. If you drank craft beer, you were outdoorsy. If you were outdoorsy, you drank craft beer. And so that's also part of the brewery 
being themed the way that it is, uh, is to kind of get connected back with those original ties of what started the craft beer movement in the United States. Right. That, and I love that story. So now that we know a little bit about you, we know a little bit about Craig, let's kind of get into the nuts and bolts of the brewery. So the brewery does craft beer actually on location and has mm-hmm. several craft beer types. So talk to us about how those beers are named, maybe give us some examples, and then talk about how the beer is crafted on site a little bit. Sure, yeah. Um, so we have uh, year-round beers. I think we have seven different styles of year-round beers um, that's available in cans and on draft. And then seasonals that we um, are constantly adding and, you know, based on their popularity, reintroducing later on. So some of my favorite ones. Um, so the, the Blue Blaze is our flagship. So Blue Blaze is the name of the beer. Um, it is an alt beer. So like a medium bodied German amber. And uh, that's our flagship. Our other beer names from the year round list include our Yellow Blazer, which is a Kolsch. The Pink Blazer, which is one of my favorites, and that's a Hefeweizen. We have a Black Blaze, a Double Blaze, and an amber blaze. Uh, so all of these fun different references to to the blazes as either slang or as they actually stand on the trail. Um, and then we also have a... Right, and I'm of- sitting here trying not to laugh because like, you know, the pink blaze beer, the yellow blaze, the blue blaze, it, it, I love it. I no, totally yeah, I was so it. tickled yeah. the first time that I walked in. <laughs> like seeing, seeing a beer called pink blazer and, and like... <laughs> labeled uh, as such and in, in, in the can and it's funny actually when I when I finished the trail I came home and my parents had a surprise like coming home party for me and my brother lives here in Charlotte as well and he showed up with a four pack of the beer from Blue Blaze and I had <laughs> known of the brewery but I never put the connection together and I was right. like oh Pink Blazer that's that's this that's that's what I the you know the the joke that was the, like the whole time on the trail and all of these slang right. words that we use the whole time that nobody else knows what that means and um and here there was a brewery right in my backyard that got got the joke and was putting it out there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we also have a uh, Carolina Thread Trail Pale Ale and so that is named in honor of our local trail system that's here in the Carolinas through 15 counties um in in Mecklenburg County which is Charlotte and the surrounding counties and uh 10% of proceeds of our sales of that beer go to benefit that organization. Um, And then in our seasonals, we have a lot of really fun ones. Um, So this summer, we came out with a series of IPAs. Um, We started with the Sobo, which is a a citrus hazy IPA, New New England IPA. And then we did a Nobo, which is a milkshake IPA. Um, So also citrusy with lactose additive. And then we came out with an Imperial IPA, and we're tasting of this nine percent beer that's kind of based off of those two beers, and oh my um, goodness, really delicious, but like really heavy and like pretty hardcore. Right. And we're sitting there talking about what we're going to name it, and I was like, "So this is basically the Sobo meets the Nobo on steroids, right?" And they're like, "Yeah." And I was like, "So this is a yo-yo," and they're like, "Yes." Oh man! And so we have a yo-yo Imperial IPA. Oh, that is awesome. Yep. Yeah. yeah, we did a. Uh, a uh, Rattler, which is a beer mixed with a soda, a house-made raspberry lemonade soda. That's 3.8%. So we called that a Nero Day. And then we also wow. sell just the seltzer, which is non-alcoholic, and that is our Zero Day. So it's really fun to kind and of... And that's cool, too. That's cool, too. Yeah, yeah. And, and we reference a lot of other uh, outdoor culture things as well. So we have like a V-scale vanilla porter, which is a reference to rock climbing, uh, ripped corduroy imperial stout, which is a reference to skiing. So wherever we can kind of pull those in um, pull and, those and in. tie into just the general outdoor world and outdoor culture. We, we like to do that. That is awesome. So people, when you're driving through Charlotte, trying to figure, you know, on your traveling or working or whatever, I'm telling you, you got to get down there. It's like one of the coolest places. And one of the next things that we're going to talk about is it might be one of my favorite parts. So earlier you made reference to the brewery is actually located right on uh, the Carolina Thread Trail, which is a system that's currently underway here in Charlotte. And once the trail is complete, hikers will literally walk right by the brewery, which that's genius. I mean, (laughs) that is awesome. So along those lines, talk to us why it's important not only for the brewery to be involved in the community, but to also give back to the community. And I know there's an alliance that you guys are involved with. So talk to us more about what you do for the community. I know you said you go out and do trail magic. You got, you got to tell us, you got to tell the listeners who your guest speakers were because it was totally awesome. So tell us a little more about your connection with the community. Um, sure. Yeah. So, so speaking, starting on uh, the Carolina Thread Trail, um, that personally for me has been an incredible organization living here in Charlotte. 
the, the great thing about Charlotte is that we are a stone's throw away from the mountain. So if I want to do a, a, a day hike, I can make it up to like Roan Mountain or something like that pretty, pretty easily. Right. But it's still going to take the whole day. You got two or three hours of driving. You have however many hours of hiking and then coming back. And so what do you do on the days that like, OK, I have the morning off. What am I going to do? I only have like four or five hours to work with. We're in a big, you know, a city, a, a large city, and, and right. it's really easy to think that there's not hiking here. And I don't think I realized that before the trail, but then I came back and I'm like, okay, I need to find something here, something close so I can just go out and get like my hiking fix for the day. And right. the Carolina Thread Trail has done an incredible job of maintaining greenways and urban hiking throughout Charlotte. And then just in the local surrounding areas that are more rural, setting aside these um, these greenways and, and blueways, biking, hiking, urban walking, or like you know, really out, out in the sticks. Um, and they preserved all of these places and they put it all on one website. So it's, you can go to their website and you can find, find the trail that, you know, is closest to you and go out and hike it. And so I found some right. incredible gems right in my backyard through them. And yeah, just by, by working with them, um, we're really able to kind of u- unite the community within Charlotte. We have a lot of really outdoorsy folks here. And I think it's easy to get um, overshadowed as far as like North Carolina is concerned by like Asheville, because obviously they right. have a lot of really incredible stuff going on there. But we do too. And we need to remind people like there's stuff in your own backyard that you can be engaged in and you don't have to like drive three or four hours to get and have this like this experience that you're looking for. Agreed. So yeah, agreed so, so it's that. great. It's great partnering with them. And we do a number like so for for Black Friday, we do Blue Friday outside um, Blue Friday instead. And we want to like jump on REI's opt outside campaign. And so we did a trail cleanup on the Carolina Thread Trail and they co-sponsored us with that. And we picked oh, up trash nice. on the trail for a few hours in the morning. And then we went back to the brewery and had beer. It was fantastic. Yeah. Who doesn't want to do that? <laughs> right. Yeah. <It's> like easy, <laughs> easy sell, easy sell. Um, and then... Uh, <laughs> And it's, it's incredible, you know, coming back, I'm like, or I especially remember before the trails looking for other people in Charlotte, like who, who here wants to talk, like, I need to talk to somebody about this and, and talk to somebody with experience and ask them my questions. And I just felt like I wasn't finding that in Charlotte. And since I've been at Blue Blaze, I've met so many through hikers or so many section yeah. hikers or so many people who walk in that door and they immediately get it. And there's this huge, you know, chunk of the Appalachian Trail culture that is here in Charlotte. And I love doing what I can to get everyone right. in one room. So you mentioned the, the guest speakers. Um, so this year, I was so excited that I was able to do this. I was able to host both Jessica Mills, Dixie, from the Homemade Wanderlust yep, YouTube yep. channel, and Heather yep. Anderson, um, also known as Anish, uh, who holds the FKT for uh, self, self-supported on the Pacific Crest Trail, on the Appalachian Trail, uh, on the Arizona Trail, who did a calendar triple crown. Like her resume is insane. I mean, those guests speak, that's huge. Yes. And those are two of my yes. like complete idols in, in the hiking world um, and in life in general. And I got to, you know, host both of them, like have them here and coordinate that whole event from beginning to end. We had, you know, 100 to 150 people come out for those events. That is awesome. Just to hear them talk and to meet them in person. And it was really great to see 150 people who were all into the same thing in one room. I mean, even on trail, you don't really get that because you're all spread out, you know? And so when you have 150 yeah. people who are all showing up with their white blaze t-shirts and their ATs on their necklaces and all of that, there's, you know, it, it was, it was really incredible to be able to do both of those events. And hopefully we'll be doing more of those in the, in the coming year. Yeah. I mean, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to getting down there more. I, I don't have a clue what I was thinking. Uh, not being down there until like a couple of weeks ago is crazy. So listen, Heidi, I really, really appreciate you being on the podcast. There's one more thing I wanted to state that I think is important that Craig talked about. And it just ties in really well with with what you're doing at the brewery and what people can do when they're done hiking their long distance trail, whether it's the AT Pacific Crest Trail or whatever they're doing is getting involved. And Craig said it like this with your local ATC connection, which is, you know, your local app, you know, Appalachian trail community, whether it's your Pacific trail uh, community, getting involved and locally and meeting people and having places to go and giving back to that community. I think that's, it's huge. And I think Blue Blaze is a prime example of how that's being done. Exactly. Exactly. There's so much conversation about post-trail depression. And I think that, you know, you feel like you're, you're removed from your people when you, when you get off trail and you go back to your home, your town, if it's not on trail and you feel really removed. And there are other, most, most cities, most towns and stuff have that community there you just have to find it and um and get engaged with that and you can find those same like-minded people not 
you know, restricted just to the Appalachian Trail and just that that small piece of territory. Right. I think it's great. So Heidi, tell us how the listeners, if they want to contact you directly at the brewery, tell us how they can do that. Sure. Yeah. Um, so uh, any questions, comments, concerns, you can reach out at uh, to events at blueblazebrewing.com. I monitor that email. So just if you have any questions or if you want to come out and visit us, if you want to do some sort of event with us, have something that you think might catch our eye, uh, that that's the best way to get in touch with us. All right. Very good. And also, if they want to uh, get some more information about your sketches and your website, you want to give them that as well? Um, sure. Yeah. So my Instagram is Sketching Summits um, and my website is SketchingSummits.com. So you can find me on either of there and check out uh, some of the paintings that I've been doing. I have a whole series from the Appalachian Trail and then uh, mostly lately I've been working on commissions, which are normally trail related as well. Uh, so some stuff from like the PCT and, and all of that. All right. Very cool. All right. Well, Heidi, thanks again for being on the podcast and I'll see you at the brewery soon. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right. Take care. You too. Thanks again, Heidi, for joining us on our second January Jester mini episode about entrepreneurs inspired by the trail. The Blue Blaze Brewing Company is a prime example of how you can still be connected to the trail and give back to your local community. I hope all of you have enjoyed our January Jester mini episodes, and I look forward to finding more entrepreneurs inspired by the trail. I'm wondering if you'd go wandering with me through the wilderness and woods to where the winds are blowing free through the darkness of the night heading toward the morning light I wonder if you'd wander with me and I'll spread the word and you beat the drum we'll round up the truth and get the gang to come and we'll leave the streets and these neighborhoods head over the river and through the woods you're wondering if i go wandering with you what kind of trouble we'll get ourselves into Would it be wrong to tag along with a band of vagabonds? You wonder if I'd wander with you. So I'll spread the word and you beat the drum. We'll round up the troops and get the gang to come. And we'll leave the streets and these neighborhoods head over the river. you ever get lost or if the trail leads you astray the music of the pack can always bring you back i wonder can we wander away and i'll spread the word and you beat the drum round up the troops and get the gang to come Looking for a fun way to win up to 25 times your money this football season? Test your skills on Prize Picks, the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projection for a wide variety of statistics, and place your entry. It's as easy as that. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 
into $250 with just a few taps. Easy gameplay, quick withdrawals, and an enormous selection of players and stat options are what make Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Ready to test your skills? Join the Prize Picks community of more than 7 million football fans who have already signed up. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit up to $100. Just visit prizepicks.com/get100 and use code GET100. That's code GET100 at prizepicks.com slash get100 for a first deposit matchup to $100. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy.